not moving. He's like a statue. It looks like eyes all over him. He must be one of the people who were here before us. Let's go back. <gasps> There's a light. What is it? Jimmy, Valerie, you down here? It's oh, only Dad. Yes, Daddy, we're here. What happened? I heard a scream. Daddy, look! Do you know what this is? It's a stalagmite. Looks like a man! It's incredible. He's been preserved. A perfect specimen. But how did he get in here? He must have traveled a long, long way. And a long time ago. But why? Why is he so like us? Well, why not? We humans are the most practical shape and size for life on our planet. That's why we've survived and become the leading species. And his planet must have been very similar. Do you think there'll be any more of them? I think it's very unlikely. It's a million to one chance that he's been preserved. In what appears to be crystalline calcium deposit. I think we'd better get out of here. I think there are traces of Krypton gas here. Come on, let's go and tell the others what we found. Look, Hamlet, a man from another world. And it's thanks to you we've found him. Hello, this is Buckan Island calling Moon Rocket One. Are you receiving me? Over. Ian Murray, MR1. I have nothing to report. Any news of the others? Over. Now, Jet, Ian. But when Professor Wedgwood set up his base in the cave, he arranged to contact me from MR2 every two hours, by Earth time. I should hear from him in a few minutes. Over. Good. Jean, I'm fed up playing chess by myself. I just can't resist cheating, and it's not much fun that way. Would you ask Field to give me a game the next time he's on listening watch? Over. Yes, of course, Ian. But I warn you, he's improved. None of us have won a game from him since you left. Over and out. So that's what radioactivity looks like. Let Hamlet have a look. Oh, you are soppy with that guinea pig. Well, number 219 shows the central cylinders with their corrugated surfaces. Corrugated surfaces, yep. Now, uh, John, what are your findings? Well, I've examined the crystalline deposit from the stalagmite encasing this man. But of course, I shall have to inspect these specimens further under proper laboratory conditions. But there's a marked resemblance to terrestrial Cambrian formation. Cambrian? Yes. But, Doctor, how old is this man? Well, I should say he's been here for something like 400 million years. 400 million years? But there was nothing on Earth then. That's before dinosaurs, before anything. It was before anything very much on this Earth. The trilobites were just about to come up from the sea then. You mean monsters? Quite the contrary. They were tiny, minute little creatures the size of pinheads. They came up from the seas and it's a remarkable fact, but nevertheless true that all the animals on Earth developed from these creatures. While somewhere else, highly developed then, or something very like, already existed. John, what's your theory of what happened to that man? I think perhaps a great catastrophe happened here. And possibly this man tried to reach the last remnants of air. And in the coldness of the cave, he froze. It was just by chance that he happened to be under calcium and water deposits. Just by chance, Doctor? Why was he standing upright? Anyway, I'd better get these specimens analyzed before I can be sure. I'll help the traction, Doctor. Thank you. Dad, what are you going to do with the stalagmite man? We're going to take him back to Earth with us. But first, we've got to find out more about him. By getting inside that spaceship. Let's get back to MR2, will you, and get our cutting tools? Oh, and I expect you'll want to send a report through to Earth. <laughs> yeah, I certainly do. If my editor will ever believe me. Well, may I take my radio operator? Yes, you can go along too. Oh, good. Well, oh, come on, Jeff, let's get our space helmets on there. But, Dad, you said you weren't going to cut a hole in the spaceship. I know, Jimmy, but we've tried every other way. Such a beautiful bit of work, I hate to do it. But we've got to find out more about their civilization. And I'm sure the secret lies in there. John, how far have you got to those symbols? I think the answer to that may be within reach. I'm beginning to wonder whether they're letters at all. Daddy, is there anything we can do? Not for the moment, Valerie. Well, there is. Here, take these pads and go around the caves and note down all the symbols you can find. Then we can start to tabulate them. Would you do that? Yes, of course. Just copy whatever you see and make a note of where you saw it. All right, Professor Meadows. Come on, Jimmy. 
Ah, good. I'll open the doors for you. And now you know where all the oxy settling tools are in this fry ship, don't you? Meteorite? Yes. Well, I hope there aren't any more of that. Have you got one like this? No. But I've got one like a cross with a sort of knot in it. Perhaps they were playing noughts and crosses. I wonder what they all meant, Val. Perhaps they were instructions like, turn out the lights or don't bump your head. How are they going to find out? People do somehow. Well, they worked out the Dead Sea Scrolls. I think they start by seeing how often the same symbol is repeated. Well, I've got some of these signs repeated here, on top of each other. You can't have. Mine are all written across. You look. Looks like a song. What's this bit written across here? Perhaps Dad can tell us what it means. Daddy, we found a sum. You mean I found it? What sort of sum? Look. I've worked it out. Og and Og makes Pog. Does it add up? Well, I don't suppose they talk like that, but... You know, you could be right. That could be a sum. Where was it? Over there. Let's go and have a look. Come on, Val. Let's find some more. I'm going to try these on the boys at school when we get back. We've been all around now. No, we haven't. I saw one on the wall down there. There might be some others. I'm not going down there. Not with that man there. Then I'll go on my own if you're scared. I didn't say I was scared. Then come on, then. This way. I think young Jimmy was right. This could be mathematical. Now, taking this as the digit one, you see? One and one make two. Well, I'm sure that wasn't carved by the same people who carved those wedges on the rocks outside. Yes, they're so crude. It's as though they were scrawled on the rock by a child. This isn't any good. It's a dead end. Well, then let's go back. No, no. wait a minute. We ought to explore it properly. Not four million, four hundred million years old. We can't see very much detail yet, but he appears to be very much like ourselves. Have you got all that, Jean? Over. Yes, I've taken it all down. But four hundred million years. We can't believe it, are you sure? Over. Well, that's right, Jean. He was preserved in a stalagmite. Professor Wedgwood and his colleagues are making further investigation. Over. Where did this man come from? Over. Somewhere in the universe. Well, that's all for now, Jean. We've got to get there. Over and out. But where in the universe? I mean, where are the rest of them? Now, perhaps you'll find out when we get back to the cave. You got those cutting tools ready? Come on. <coughs> it's like a teddy bear, but it's got six legs. And a snout. Here's a toy fish with wings. This is a model of that spaceship. So there were children here. I wonder why they left their toys behind. Well, what's that you've got there, Jimmy? We found this as well. It's a kind of a picture book. Let me see. Hmm. Seems like a parchment. Yeah, it looks like a child's spelling primer. Well, this is the best stroke of luck we've had so far. Why, look at this. See here. 
Supposing this meant life, all living matter. And look at this symbol. And here, every one of the 13 symbols. And look at this. This could be inorganic matter. Then what could that be? It means their names. Well, how do you know that, Jimmy? Well, look. There's a sign like that on the bottom of this toy spaceship. There you are, Galump. How do you know what it's called? It's as good a name as any, and it looks like a Galump. You don't know how these signs were said, do you? No, Jimmy, and probably we never shall. In a way, they may have had two languages. A written one and a spoken one, like Japanese or Chinese. I think we might take Jimmy's word for it and call it a Galump. Look, Hamlet, a Galump. Ah, there's Henson. Did you get everything? Yes, Dad. And we saw two meteorites. Is the spaceship all right? Oh, yes, they were a couple of miles away. Where do you want the cutting equipment, Dad? Uh, we'll get it all over by the Galump. By the what? Oh, that's Jimmy's new name for the spaceship. By the way, Henderson, have a look and see what O'Connell's got, our latest discoveries. That should make your editor sit up. Give me a hand with this, will you, Mary? Well, where did these come from? Dad, must you really cut a hole in it? Wait, so, Jimmy, we've got to find out what's inside. Why don't we read the instructions first? Look, Kinoff, Kabonga. What exactly does that mean, young man? Well, it might mean something to do with air. Yes. That could be an air inlet. Couldn't we try it? Let me have that nozzle. It could be some sort of valve. Supposing there were a perfect vacuum in there, and that hatch opened outwards, well, no wonder we couldn't open it. Anyway, let's try it. All right, now turn on the pressure. Pressure inside, now even with the outside. Now, if we step up the pressure a little bit. It's opening! Look! There's something moving in there! And over. King takes queen. Over. Hmm. This is a massacre. Knight takes bishop. Check. Now you get yourself out of that one. Over. Mm -hmm. Looks as though I'm going to lose this game, Ian. Uh, just give me time to think. Go on, get me all possible permutations from this position. Right. Sort of fix him. Now let me see. Uh, supposing we say king to rook three. Now what are you going to do? Over. Yeah. Looks as if you've got me. Now I'll have to think about it. Over. Hello, British Moon Rocket. This is Sledlovsk Radar Tracking Station with an important message for you. Over. Hold it, Field. I've got an important message coming through. Over. Hello. British Moon Rocket to Sperglovsk. What is your message? Over. We have been monitoring your signals and we have important message from Comrade Fedorovich of our staff. Comrade Fedorovich is chess champion of the Urals. His message reads, move knight to knight four and check. 
You will then win the game in five moves. Over. <laughs> Please thank comrade uh, 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 over. Comrade Vedorovich. Goodbye and congratulations on your moon landing. Over and out. Hello, Phil. Over. All right, I heard. I concede the game. I can't beat Comrade Fedorovich. I'll confess to you now I was using a computer. Do you want to play another game? Over. You so-and-so feel playing a game of chess like that. No, I've got an instrument check to do now, but I'll give you another beating later on. Over and out. That flap was your moving object, Fabry. Oh, nice scare you gave us. You see, it's so finely balanced that the slightest draft sets it moving. See? It's oh. smashing in there, but Dr. O'Connell says he wants to examine the engines by himself. Gosh, Dad, this must have been there right there. What are these? Navigation controls, I should think. These controls, Norman, they're all set behind glass. Yes, I expect they wanted to keep them isolated, seeing the ship was atomic powered. But the light couldn't have been burning all that time. Well, that may have been because of the air we pumped in here. It may have activated some light filament. Everything seems perfect. It's just as if they'd been here yesterday. Why was it left behind? Hmm. Perhaps they didn't bring enough fuel with them to get back to wherever they came from. Or else perhaps they didn't survive on the moon because they didn't bring enough oxygen. Daddy, there's some kind of a locker here. Look, it open. There's something in there. Let's get it out. So be careful with it, Jimmy, whatever it is. It's all right. It's only a kind of a book. Let's see. This looks like a, a chronicle, a diary. Or a love book. You could be right, Jeffy. A love book of their journey. There might be everything we want to know in there. Jimmy, get that to Dr. Connell right away. He's made a great deal of headway with their writing. See what he makes of that. All right, Dad. It might be the ship's notebook. Let me see. Anything else there, Valerie? It seems we're half an hour late, sending our report back to Earth. Uh, Jeffrey, get over to MR2, will you, and take Henson with you. He may want to report to his paper. All right, Dad. No, there doesn't seem to be anything here. Oh, yes. Here's a coil of wire. Let's see. This looks like a solenoid, part of the electrical apparatus. Just a moment. Coil you've got there. There's another one here, set in the wall. Look. What's underneath it then? Like a camera lens. Oh, perhaps this isn't a coil of wire, but a spool. You know how you make recordings of television programs, not on film, but on magnetic tape. Now perhaps this could be the same, only on wire. You mean there might be pictures in there? <laughs> no. No, I'm just getting caught up in the fantasy of all this. And even if there were, the chances of getting it to work are pretty remote. Well, Edward, I think between us we can break this down. With your cold, brilliant mathematical brain. That's enough of your Irish brownie. No, not Irish brownie, just Irish intuition. I believe we can do it. Can we help you, Dr. Connell? No, Carlo? not this time, Henry. Your father and I have got to put our heads together and we shall need absolute concentration for a few hours. But I found it. Yes, yes, I know. And you'll be the first to be told what's in it now. Off you go, both of you. Come on, you can help me take some more photographs. Well, Redwood, you must start putting your thinking cap on again. We're going for a little excursion into an unknown world. A world of lost toys. <laughs> Hello, MR2. This is Buck and Island calling. Hello, MR2. Are you receiving me? Over. Yes, we're receiving you, Jean. Jeff here. This is MR2. Over. Hello, Jeff. Thank goodness I've got you at last. I expected contact half an hour ago. Over. I'm sorry we're late, Jean. We made some more terrific discoveries and didn't notice the time. Here's Mr. Henderson. Hello, Jean. Can you take another tape recording to pass on to London? Over. Yes, right. You're on now. Over. Back. This is Conway Henderson on the moon calling Earth. Now in its third day on our lunar satellite, the British expedition has made more amazing discoveries. They suggest that people similar to ourselves once visited the moon. During the past two hours, we have discovered children's toys. From these toys, we have a crude picture of life that existed half a billion years ago, of an advanced civilization that flourished and possibly perished somewhere in the universe before evolution on Earth even began. Well, that 
Isn't it, Jimmy? I think we photographed him from every angle now. Come on, I better finish plotting our return journey back to MR1. Are we going home, then? Well, we can't stay here forever. I wouldn't mind. I think it's quite exciting. And Hamlet loves it. Anyway, there's no school up here. That's a very good reason for going back to Earth, then. Well, if your newspaper doesn't wish to believe this report, that's up to you. But may I remind you that for many centuries, it was believed the world was flat. Goodbye. Jean, this is serious. I've just had a report from Greenwich Observatory. Yes. According to their observations, both the Earth and the Moon are passing through a stream of meteoric particles. Do you think we should inform Professor Wedgwood? Yes, immediately. If meteorites are falling on the Moon. Without any atmosphere to protect them, both those rockets on the Moon's surface are in danger. I wouldn't like to be in their shoes. What about Ian? No. He's on his own guarding that ship. There's nothing he could do anyway. Get on to MR2's frequency and keep calling them. All right, Jean. But I think Jeff and Henderson will have gone back to the cave by now. Keep calling them anyway. We've got to let them know. Hello, MR2. Buck and Ireland calling. We have an urgent message for you. Over. Tea time already? Thanks, Valerie. You're making the place real homey. I'm getting quite good with the primus serve now. See, here's the map, Jimmy. Where's that line going to? Well, that leads to MR1. From the land rocks I noted on our way here, I've been able to chart our route back. See, here's your rocket out on that plateau. And over here to the south is the one we came in and where Ian Murray is now. Poor Ian. He's missing all the fun. Well, there's a lot of machinery and delicate instruments in the rocket that have to be maintained. We're to get back to Earth alive. Ah, gee, you got me left, Valerie. How poor you come. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Seen any more meteorites, Jeff? Only a long way off. Dad's still working in the spaceship? Yes, he's been working in there for the past hour. Ah, oh, there you are, Henderson. The tape recorder. Where is it? It's down here. Why? I think you'll see why in a few minutes. We'd like you all in here straight away. I thought you'd be the first, Jimmy. What's going to happen, Dad? You'll see in a moment. I want you all to sit down and watch that panel over there. Oh, what's the tape recorder for? I want a recording made of this that can be sent back to Earth, just in case. I see. What are we going to see? You're going to see a moving picture. You're going to hear a story. The story of the people who traveled in this very spaceship 400 million years ago. Hello, MR2. Hello, MR2. This is Buck and Island. Are you receiving me? Over. Still no reply. We must get them quickly. If a meteorite holds that rocket, they'll never get back. 